guest today is Paul Rykoff, founder and executive director of IAVA. Paul, it's a pleasure to have you on the show. My pleasure, man. Great to be here. What is IAVA? IAVA is the Iraq and Afghanistan Veterans of America. We're the first and largest nonprofit for veterans coming back from Iraq and Afghanistan. There are about 2.3 million men and women who served, and we focus on health care, education, employment, and community building programs for them. And what was your inspiration for starting IAVA? I got pissed off. When, when I came home from Iraq in 2004, I had commanded 38 guys in, in central Baghdad for about a year. And when they came home, there was nowhere for them to go. Uh, the existing structures didn't work. The VA was behind the times. The older veterans groups didn't reflect what they looked like and what they were looking for. And we kind of networked around that. It developed into a website that was really just a glorified message board called Operation Truth. Uh, and we realized we had something. There was a spark. There was a need, and the veterans rallied around that. Paul, you're our first social entrepreneur on the show. You decided to go the nonprofit route. Many people watching are passionate about causes and movements. What has been good about using the nonprofit matrix as a model? I think it's wide open right now. You know, I think that there's an assumption that nonprofit is slow, um, that it's not intellectually challenging, um, that it's not really entrepreneurial, uh, and, and the space is becoming increasingly entrepreneurial. There's more venture philanthropy. Uh, there, are, there are programs like Kickstarter and others that create an immediate market for somebody with a good idea. Um, so, so it's never been a better time to enter the space. And you, know, you get the double bottom line. You, know, you get a tremendous experience from a business standpoint, and you also get to make the world a better place. How hard is it to start a nonprofit? Is there a lot of bureaucracy that you can overcome? Because I can know you can start a company in one day. You know, I think there are some barriers to entry like anything else. You know, creating a 501c3 tax status is, is, is a bit of a challenge, but it's nothing you can't overcome. And like any other business, you've got to be relentless. And I think an important thing to emphasize, emphasize is you've still got to have metrics. You've still got to show impacts. You've got to show how many people you've fed, how many people you put in school, and keep your, your costs low. Uh, there's a, a huge emphasis in the nonprofit community, for better or worse, uh, at looking at your operating expenses and looking at your fundraising costs. And, and keeping those down will help you stand above the best. You mentioned fundraising. In the tech startup scene, you do yeah. a Series A, you do a Series right. B. Those are separated by a year, year and a half. Right, right. I bet in a nonprofit, you're always having to raise money. How yeah. does that work? Yeah, raising money in the nonprofit world is a hustle. I mean, it's nonstop, and you've got to be relentless, especially for, for us, because we're in a new space. You know, there, Veterans is not a line item at every foundation right now. So you can't walk into Rockefeller and Ford and these big and gates and the big foundations and say, hi, I'm here to apply for the veterans component. You're really carving out an entire new space in philanthropy uh, and in nonprofit, a lot like AIDS 30 years ago. So raising money is, is hard as hell. It is probably one of the hardest parts of being in the nonprofit space, um, especially because oftentimes you have to cobble it together. You have to hit a lot of singles and doubles and $10,000 grants and $5,000 donations. Um, but at the same time, like any other business, it's important to diversify your revenue streams, leverage the small donor uh, opportunities that are available, uh, and really look for long-term partners who are invested in your cause. Have you ever been turned down repeatedly? Constantly, yeah. I mean, the, the, you have to be relentless if you're going to be in the nonprofit space. Some people just don't care about your cause, don't have the money right now, claim poverty. I mean, there's a lot of reasons why people will tell you no. So you've got to be relentless. But, but if you believe in your cause, it's essential. And I'd also, it wouldn't be an entrepreneur if I didn't throw in a plug. So if folks are watching and they want to make a donation, we're a tremendous return on your investment. Go to IAVA.org, invest in this new generation of veterans, and it'll be the best dollar you ever spent. You've written that the unemployment rate for veterans is about 20%, which is about double of the civilian population rate. Right. What are you guys doing to combat that? So we're tackling this issue head on. We see the unemployment rate at 20%. Uh, the Department of Labor says it's anywhere from 11 to 13, but here's an important role that IAVA plays. We know more than the Department of Labor does. Department of Labor, in, in their monthly uh, assessment of the unemployment rate, only surveys 100 veterans. That's a really limited subset. Last time we talked to about 3,500. So data is essential to understanding the issues, to identifying the problems, and creating programs and, and products that can help them. You as a CEO have to navigate many different constituencies. You have your own staff, you have politicians on the one hand, many different characters. How do you navigate this atmosphere? I think the important part is to have a plan. You have to have a plan for relationships just like you do for your finances or for your office space. Uh, and you have to build a, a plan that has resources. So you know that might be your database, it might be your personal assistant, it might be your board. Uh, and understanding that relationships are, are one of the most important things you have to do as a CEO. You have to find the right people to provide you with support, resources, partnership. Paul, what can we expect from IAVA in the coming months? Um, we're really pushing the envelope of what nonprofits do. We view ourselves as a lifestyle brand. 
We're, we're kind of like Livestrong. If you think about Livestrong as being there for everybody who has cancer, we want to be there for everybody who's been an Iraq and Afghanistan vet. So we're pushing the envelope. We're going to be involved in ultimate fighting. We're sponsoring fighters because we know that's where our, our members are. So we're going to sponsor fighters in the UFC. Uh, we're going to be incredibly aggressive on Capitol Hill. It's nonpartisan, but we know that Congress isn't getting much done. So we've got to be innovative in, in using our membership and especially social media to make an impact. And I think for us, like, like a lot of other companies, the future is mobile. How can we put resources in the hands of our members to set them up for success? Whether it's knowing when the nearest job fair is or, or a local nonprofit that can provide them with resources, if we can put that in their hand on their mobile device, that's really going to be the forward edge of, of providing service at scale for veterans and I think for, for any other group that, that needs help. Paul, you're doing remarkable work. It's been such a pleasure to have you on the show. Thank you for coming in. Thanks, man. My pleasure. Great to be here.